Introduction to the new and improved Proxim Web GUI. All right, so um, today we are going to look at our new uh, HTTP GUI you know, for our uh, QB uh, 9150s and the QB 10100 radios and uh, up, uh, upcoming Proxim radios as well. All right. Um, today we're going to go ahead and actually cover the summary page because there's a lot of changes here. Uh, this is a quick glance uh, type of screen. So uh, we're going to cover this and then uh, there are going to be some other videos that are going to cover um, all of these down here. Okay, so kind of start. You could go ahead and press this and this is going to shrink it down. If you want it back, let's bring it back. Okay, so let's cover what we see here um, once again everything's at a quick glance we have device details uh, it tells us uh, what the uh, network mode is if it's in bridge which it is right now it's gonna say bridge if it's in router mode it's gonna say router okay uh, if it's gonna be here's our IP address uh, if it was in routing mode we would actually have uh, three IP addresses one for the wireless and uh, of course for the Ethernet port okay over here, uh, Ethernet port. We say that uh, we know that it's up. If it was down, it would be, uh, it would be, red. Uh, here's another radio, as you can see, it would look like this. Okay. Uh, here's the MAC address, and it tells us exactly where we connected at. Uh, 100. In my case, it's a, a 100 megs full duplex. Okay. Uh, let's move down here. Uh, link details. Now, link details is going to cover our local and remote. Okay, so in this particular case, this is a quick bridge, so that's what we have. Here's my A radio, here's my B radio, and device names. Okay, we have a little bar graph over here, and this, of course, is going to change when the uh, SNR uh, fluctuates as well. So this changes about every five seconds. This whole screen pretty much changes every five seconds. It's an auto refresh. Um, tells us once again what what the radio is a B the our wireless MAC address and here is our data rate so right now we are collect uh, connecting at uh, 156 megs okay um, over here we have the link performance graph okay so what this covers is the inbound and outbound okay what this is actually uh, looking at is the network statistics it's actually looking at at uh, our uh, in and out, okay, and it's actually looking at um, in and out octets. What it's looking at is the delta. So the delta would be uh, the w rate between this number and then when it changes to the next number, that's going to be the delta. So that's exactly what uh, this is monitoring, okay. So the time you kind of go back in there, it has to refresh, but that's exactly what this inbound and uh, outbound is looking at, okay. Uh, we have our wireless details. Um, it's going to give us our network name, uh, the country code, okay, whatever domain is, channel bandwidth, okay. Uh, if we're at 20, 40, 80 for the AC radios, and then of course our operating channel, okay. Um, I'm going to cover these guys over right here last. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to the link quality. Now, the link quality uh, section is covered by these uh, three different segments, okay, um, SNR, errors, and power, and we're going to go ahead and go over them. All right, um, this uh, piece right here is extremely, you know, is extremely important. Uh, we could have... Um, the installers or the the NAC itself um, go ahead and use this as an acceptance piece okay uh, by looking in um, at all of these we could go ahead and see exactly what's happening um, with the radio um, at any particular time when you press on SNR you can see that these items change okay so each time you press on them you see that they change okay um, they also have different colors, okay, so we have green, orange, and red, okay, that's the colors they're going to change by, all right, so for the SNR in dual stream, when it's green, uh, both uh, A1 and A2, SNR is greater than the minimum SNR, when it's orange, uh, either of the A1 or A2 is greater than the minimum SNR, and red, both A1 and 
A2 SNR is less than the minimum SNR. In single stream, green is either A1 or A2 is greater than the minimum. Orange is either A1 or A2 is greater than the minimum minus 3, negative 3 dB. And then red is either A1 or A3 if it's less than uh, the minus SNR minus negative 3. Okay. Down here for the errors, okay, green is we have the frame rate, error rate is zero, frame rate is one to five, and then it's above five. So if you are accumulating a lot of errors, th this is going to uh, it's going to turn red and it's going to kind of change, and then the power just always stays green. Okay, so let's look at S and R. All right, so what it's going to do, it's going to tell you the, your MIMO, your multiple and multiple now details. Okay, it tells us our local um, SNR info. Okay, so here's our A1, A2 signal noise and SNR. Okay, and down here you can see we also have a SNR statistics, which tells us our local and remote uh, signal noise and SNR. Okay, errors. Errors are going to tell us exactly what it is. Our error statistics, uh, what our error frame rate is, zero, how many decrypt. We have our CRC and our physical errors. Okay, and once again, the SNR stays the same. And then power, power tells us in DBM what our total power is, what our TPC is, our transfer power control. It's, uh, it was reduced by eight. And then our uh, EIRP, uh, it's set per region. Okay. All right. And last but not least, we have these items down here. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the link test feature. Uh, the link test feature is our uh, throughput testing tool. Okay. Um, it was introduced uh, back um, in the 820s and the um, 8200 series radios has it as well with uh, version 3.2.0. Okay. Now, the tool itself is fairly simple. Uh, you could test uplink, downlink, bidirectional, or um, that's it, okay? Uh, we have verbose, which is, uh, uh, once checked, it's going to show you all of the information here. Now, the test takes about 60 seconds to run, and it uh, well, during that time, it samples how many errors you have, your SNR, and everything like that. So, like, again, it's a, it's a really good tool. So let's go ahead and do a click, uh, quick test. All right, so um, I have bidirectional. We're going to do verbose and this start. And once again, the whole process takes 60 seconds, okay? Uh, we're going to wait until this bar goes uh, all the way towards the end, and you're going to see uh, all the information here. Okay, so we have finished. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so um, the information that we have here is our... Here, MAC address, uh, the duration type, 60 seconds, um, how many um, bytes we said. Now, you could change this. Uh, this is all via uh, CLI. Uh, we're going to go uh, actually cover this, and I'm going to provide uh, the information in a later video. But uh, there, there is a way, if you look at the reference manual, there is a way to change uh, the MTU size. Okay, uh, we are unlimited for our uh, downlink and uplink. So our UDP throughput was uh, 554 megs going across, okay, and it shows what our uplink speeds were and then what our downlink speeds were, okay. And towards here, we could also see our local remote. It covers our send successes, retrials, failures. All right, uh, a while the stats, we're looking at how many phi errors, CRC errors, uh, if the medium is busy, if we have activity on there. And during that time, it shows our signal noise and SNR for both um, uh, local and remote. So this is a great tool for you to see uh, what your throughput is. Um, and uh, dev, uh, highly recommend that um, uh, it, you use it. Let's go back to some where we have spectrum analyzer. So the spectrum analyzer is here now. Okay, no more digging for it. 
All right. uh, it's channel scan time is uh, going to be, you could set it to 100 to 60,000 uh, milliseconds by default set to 1,000. So you could do a low frequency filter and a high. So you could go, let's just say, 5.2 to 5.3, okay, 5.3. So if you just put that amount, that's the only thing it's actually going to scan. You start and it's going to start doing the scan as normal. Okay, now down here, we also have the scan statistics. Okay, and the scan statistics is this, uh, the advanced scan. It tells us uh, what it sees, the MAC address, if there's a system ANC, this is an access point that it sees, uh, our MAC SNR, and what the packet count is. And so on the QB9150, uh, on the B radio, okay, and also on the AP, uh, 9100R, the spectrum analyzer is going to have a uh, an option for the access point itself. So in the uh, 9150 case, we have the, the 5 gigahertz, which is our uh, quick bridge link, and then here is the uh, 2.4 access point, okay? And we're basically going to see the exact same thing when it's run. You're going to see uh, your frequency channels down here, and when you scroll down, you're going to see uh, basically everything that it picks up from uh, from channel 1 to 11 or whatever channels that you have, okay? Um, once again, th this is what it's going to look like on the uh, QB9150B radio and also on the AP9100R. Okay, um, so this is actually, this is really good. Everything is in one spot uh, before we had it in uh, two different locations, uh, two different tabs, if you will. Uh, now everything just kind of shows up in this one happy uh, location, if you will. Okay, back to summary. And then the log. Uh, the log is exactly that. Um, you have the vent log, which just shows us everything that's uh, going on. And then you have your ins, uh, your license, and then of course it tells you what this is good for. Okay, um, what the radio is licensed for, uh, what what is what is it comes equipped with, so to speak. Okay. Um, so basically, here is the log. Now you can see the link went down. The link went down because we're running the spectrum analyzer. Okay, when you run the spectrum analyzer, the RF link goes down. So when we look at it here, you can see that when the RF link is down, everything is, uh, uh, no info is available because it, the link is down and we have this little uh, red, red circle. Let me kind of cover the stuff up here. We have the system name, okay, it tells us uh, what, the, what the radio is, is the firmware version, uh, here's the build number, system, uptime, admin, user, okay, now this actually has, um, uh, three different um, logins okay that's some we're going to cover later on but we have admin we'll put you in what you see here you have a monitor which also going to see uh, put you what you see here but you're going to be restricted at what you configure because you just monitor and then there's the advanced uh, when you log in under advanced you're going to be logged into the um, the familiar tree based GUI um, that uh, the Proxim has been known for for many years. Okay, um, over here we have home, so you could click home at any time. Here is our commit, and there is reboot if you need to reboot. Okay, uh, if you need to commit, this is actually going to uh, um, it's going to blink. This is going to blink red if you need to uh, to do a reboot. Okay, so here we have uh, the link is back. Okay, so as this is a, a, a quick bridge 9150, which means that the one end is a quick bridge, but the B radio uh, also has a uh, an access point built in. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see, the uh, the main summary page is the same, uh, but now we have an addition of a radio two. Okay, and uh, here it's going to tell us our SSID or whatever SSIDs we have set, our VAPs, uh, country, stations connected, uh, operating mode, um, dot, uh, uh, dot NG, dot B, so, and so on, our channel bandwidth, and then uh, whatever our channel is. Okay, but we could get the exact same uh, type of information uh, from the summary page on the B radio with the AP. Okay. Um, if this was a QB 
10, 100, we would be looking at similar information as here, except this would be reversed. This would just be, say, uh, QB uh, 10, 100, A, and then B, and then when you look on the reverse side, we'll just say B and A. And, this, and the information would be the same, extremely similar to this. For more information regarding uh, the new GUI and uh, any questions regarding Proxum, uh, technical support and uh, questions regarding equipment, please contact Proxum Technical Support uh, via my.proxum.com or contact your reseller and uh, we'll be more than happy to assist you with any questions that you have. Proxum Wireless values our customer's opinion, and our goal is to improve the customer experience. Your feedback is extremely valuable to us as we continuously strive to improve our products. For more information, please contact the local reseller or Proxum Wireless directly at InsideSales at Proxum.com. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.